Hey guys, and welcome to the first video on the edit place. If you're coming here from my main channel, Michael Tobin and his focus, uh, welcome. Or if you're just discovering this video, also welcome. This channel is all about editing and different tips, tricks, tutorials, full length edits, live streams, and I got a ton of stuff planned. But the biggest thing to know here is that I am completely program agnostic. Uh, I will end up creating playlists for each of the big softwares out there. We got uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is my personal main big editor. Then we got Final Cut, I uh, got Adobe Premiere, and even a little bit of Avid as I'm learning that. I want to make sure that I'm always staying up to date on software and being able to give you guys the best experience and hopefully knowledge base and things like that. Um, as well as if we may dive into some more fun topics like can you edit on an iPad? But for now, we're going to get started with the five things that you should do when getting started with DaVinci Resolve. So these essentially are what I think is um, the top five things that you should turn on, change, uh, or at least know about when getting started with DaVinci Resolve, opening a new project, and all that good stuff. So let's jump right into it. Now I normally work on a two screen setup, which I will create a video on my personal layout of DaVinci Resolve, but for the sake of the screen capture, I can really only show one, so I've consolidated it into the basic setup up in which uh, or the default layout that it uh, comes with. Now the first feature we're going to talk about is live save. Now if you're coming from Final Cut then you know the joys of knowing that after every single keystroke, every single change or edit, it automatically saves your progress. Premiere Pro users, eh, we know the struggles of that. I think rather stupidly, DaVinci Resolve has a live save feature but it is turned off by default so you're stuck with the, I believe it's every 10 or 15 minutes it auto saves uh, which is always super annoying so all you have to do is go up to DaVinci Resolve at the top if you're on a Mac or preferences wherever you are uh, on a PC and then you may start out on system but just go to user project save and load second one right there and then you have live save make sure that is checked as well as I would recommend turning on project backups if that is off by default um, and you can change all the different parameters right here um, this basically allows you to have a separate project file uh, to where if like one gets corrupt or the whole database goes astray, um, you have different project files that you can kind of go back to for different versions. So if, if you know, your latest version kind of gets corrupt because you've been transferring it around on different hard drives or something, you can go back to a previous version and try to get that one going. The second one is timeline resolution. And this one kind of corresponds to another video that I'm gonna do talking about how to edit um, no matter what your computer specs are in DaVinci Resolve. If I go into file and then project settings and under master settings, you will see timeline resolution. This will greatly change how your computer uh, plays back the footage. For example, I shoot everything pretty much on my Blackmagic Pocket 6K. I've worked with RED 8K footage, RE footage. Those are very heavy files to deal with. And on, you know, my trash can Mac Pro is pretty powerful. But when I get into multiple layers, color grades, effects, things like that, it definitely wants to slow down. So a lot of the time, I actually, even though I'm shooting at much higher resolutions, I'll actually change my timeline resolution to 1920 by 1080 um, and now it's going to play back incredibly smooth and not so much right now because I'm doing a screen capture and you know how that goes and we can see that it's playing back in real time because if we look in the top left above the player we can see 24 on a green dot where if I try to trip it up for a second you can see that it has to work there. But yeah, and then before I export, because I don't want to export in 1080, I like exporting in 4K, uh, all I have to do is go back to project settings again, go to timeline resolution, change it to whatever aspect ratio I want or resolution. And then the only thing to be aware of is that you may get black bars depending on what size your footage is, which is why I always recommend selecting all the clips, going over to the inspector over here, going to retime and scaling, scaling, and go to fill. If you do this, uh, especially in the beginning before you really start editing or at the end, it doesn't really matter. Um, now, if I change my resolution, it's always going to scale this image to my timeline resolution. 
which is all I need. So next up, number three is power bins. Now we'll talk more about bins, but essentially what they are is they're the place where you can create folders um, and store a bunch of new assets, media, whatever you want on the left-hand side here. That's where you store everything. But if you go under view, and then show power bins, make sure that's checked. It is off by default again. Uh, then you'll get this new section kind of below it right here where power bins show up in every single project. So what's great about that is I've started to create some fusion, basically graphics here that I can drop in um, just with like my name and stuff from my other channel. I have title sequences uh, that I can load up as well and basically I don't have to constantly be importing those into new projects and always, you know, finding where the clips are and putting them in to the project. I can put them in my power bin once and they're forever in there. And you can simply add anything into the power bin just like you would a regular bin. So I can create new bin here and say yeah, logo or something, whatever. And let's say this shot was a logo, then I can just load it in there, boom. Now this clip is forever in there. Uh, so when I open up new projects, that clip will be there. Next up, we have timeline views. There's a bunch of customizing options right here in the bottom left uh, near the player. You've seen timeline view options. You have a bunch of different things that I'd recommend playing around with, turning on and off, seeing what you like. You have waveforms. You have different ways to view the actual footage, bigger or smaller. Um, all the waveforms, you can choose how big those are. Um, but the biggest thing I want to point out here is the stacked timelines. If you're used to, especially in like Premiere, where you can have multiple projects and timelines kind of opened at the same time, turning this on, you're going to now see this bar right here. You may not have noticed it's small, but if I turn back off, you see that it's gone. Turning that back on. Now you can see we have different timelines, so I can create a new one, create different stacks, and now it's incredibly easy to go back and forth between the timelines. Uh, the way you'd have to do it before is wherever you're saving them, uh, you'd have to go and find them in your bins wherever the timelines are. So stacked timelines is definitely something um, that took me a while to find randomly, um, but it's a good thing to have. All right, so the last point that we're talking about here is something incredibly simple right in front of your face, but also can make a huge impact on your computer's performance for playback. Now everyone knows as soon as you add a color grade to a project, especially with things like noise reduction or grain or any sort of extra effects, your computer's performance is greatly going to be impacted. And so now if I try to play back, um, it's still hovering around real time. It's not terrible, um, but it's still a little bit jittery. And so one of the easiest things that you can do is actually turn off all color grade and uh, open VFX stuff. So right here above the to the top right of the player, um, you'll see this little RGB symbol here where it's currently turned on. If I simply click that, it's going to turn off the color grade on the entire project and anything like noise reduction or aperture diffraction, anything like that, it's going to be really heavy. And so the capture may not be real time, but for me, it's real time as you can see by the playback. Um, and then all I do is turn it back on whenever I want to look at a scene and watch it or anything like that. And so after that, you may be thinking, well, can't you like render out the timeline? Isn't there any options like that? Uh, absolutely. Um, and we're gonna have a whole video that's I believe going to be tomorrow's video. So definitely come back and see all the tips and tricks about how to uh, make DaVinci Resolve run faster on your computer, pretty much no matter what you have. And if you like this video and got anything out of it, I definitely would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and give this video a like, so that way we can uh, keep this growing. See you guys tomorrow. Welcome to the edit place.